Redditors who have done something intending to sacrifice their lives and actually survived. What was it like? And what were you thinking in that moment? I was in a car wreck in high school. I saw the truck that was about to hit us coming. And knew it wasn't going to stop. It was going way too fast. And I knew impact was going to possibly hurt or kill us. I was sitting next to a friend who I loved more than anything else in the world. Wish we were still friends. Comma. And without even thinking. Just on like instinct. I grabbed her and put my body on top of hers. With my head over hers. Because the car was going to hit on her side. I remember the thought flashing through my head that if anything happened to her. I'd be a mess. So I wanted it to happen to me instead. If it had to. I wasn't even really thinking. Impact happened. The car hit on her side. And for a few seconds I didn't know if anything was going to hit me. I hoped it wouldn't. I remember covering my own head with my hands and saying a really short prayer that didn't even contain words. Just a thought really. That I wasn't going to be crushed. Or impaled on glass or metal. I heard the truck hit the door. Heard the window burst in. And thought I'll live. I'll live. I'll be alright. I can't take this. And three seconds later I got off of her. And we both sat up. We were fine. I was around 10 yo. Our family decided to go to a resort. Chill with my cousins. I was playing with my phone chillin'. My cousins and other siblings are playing around the swimming pool. Running around. Around the pool also was my sister. 6yo playing an iPad beside the pool. She got bumped by one of my cousins and fell of the 6 feet pool. I don't know what got to me. I didn't know how to swim. But instantly jumped to the swimming pool with my phone. RIP my phone. And rescued my sister. I don't know what I'm doing. I just rushed into her dragged her beside the pool and didn't know how to make my body float. I pushed her upwards to my cousins and they got her. While I'm holding my breath underwater for a certain amount of time. Until they also dragged me up too and survived. I'm surprised my elder cousins didn't actually try to save my sister. And I'm also surprised I did that for my fkin sister. 3. When I was like 5. I went on a day trip with preschool. Having always been adventurous I got stuck on a cliff ledge with thorns stuck in my foot preventing me from getting back. I also couldn't crouch to free myself. Without falling forward over the edge. I think it must have been like 5 meters. Felt like a 100. Down to shallow water and big. Scary rocks. I tried to yell to get the attention of the teachers. But they didn't hear that it was an emergency. I was trapped and thought I was going to fall and die once I tired. Finally after an eternity or two. The teacher comes over and freed my 5 year old ass from the damp thorns. I never stopped climbing though. So apparently I didn't learn a thing. Not me but my friend has an intense home invasion story. He was home visiting for Christmas and fell asleep on his mom's couch watching TV. He heard a scream and gets up to check on his mom, only female in the house. Beer in hand. He heads towards her bedroom. Upon arrival he sees two assailants who have his mom at knife point demanding jewelry. To quote him in his head he said. You're an actor now act like you're tough. He screamed at them to leave the house then immediately threw beer at the assailant closest to his mom. He then proceeded to lunge at the same guy while screaming at his brother in the next room to get up. His brother runs in and joins the brawl. The manage the get the guys out the room and chase them down the hall and out of the house. My friend still laughs that in the process the one guy was so flustered he ran right into a sliding glass door. What my friend didn't realize is that his had been stabbed 10 times and his brother had been stabbed 3-4 Ike. EMTs show up and take him to the hospital with no serious wounds. His brother on the other was more serious but in the end he pulled through. In my case I was not intending. It was a reaction. I'm from Hermosillo, Sonora. Mexico. On the 5th of June. 2009 a fire broke out a warehouse next to a daycare center. A total of 49 kids died and 106 were injured. All between 5 months and 5 years of age. I was waiting for the bus at my brother's job and one of his co-workers saw the smoke just a few blocks away. He and I went there just to see what was going on. 
but as soon as we saw we both entered and began taking kids out as soon as we could. I was in autopilot. By the time we got there one of the parents crashed his pickup truck to one of the walls to make a bigger access. Since there was only one door. I remember barely being able to breathe and going in and out several times until we couldn't anymore due to the flames. By that time only firemen with the proper gear could enter. I sat on the sidewalk in silence after that. My brother's co-worker went back to the office and told everyone everything and since I didn't go back as I was sitting there in shock. He just went there to see if I was alright. He found me sitting among other people. Trying to catch my breath and realizing my throat was hurting me. People were taking kids in their own cars to the hospital before and after the ambulances got there. As there were not enough of them to handle the situation. The things I saw that day changed me. I had trouble sleeping for a few days but I forced myself to move on. I don't tell people about this here in my town because. Besides the fact that I try not to remember the details. They get extremely sensitive. And it turns into an annoying conversation. I saw a woman getting ravaged by a dog in a park next to my house. Three people were already trying to pull the dog off of her with no avail. It was a big dog too. At least 100 pounds. Yellow color. Kind of Doberman shape but stockier and had short fur. I have no idea what kind of dog it was. When I got there I wrapped my arms around the torso of the dog and lifted him right clear off the ground. The shock of being picked up off the ground caused the dog to let go of the lady. She was in a bad way too. All covered in blood and in shock. So as I'm holding this dog up and thought if it wants a fight I'll give it one. I carried it. Yelping a screaming to the other end of the park and hurled it over a road barrier and down a ravine. I figured the high ground might give me advantage. I stood my ground ready to fight. I was absolutely certain the second that dog touched the ground it was going to go for my throat. I traded my own life for that lady. Instead the dog just ran away. Never saw it again. The other people who were already there had a cell phone and called an ambulance. That afternoon I visited the lady in the hospital. She was going to be alright. I was working a job where I stood in a plywood tower about 20 feet off the ground. It was cold so we had a propane space heater the kind that attached directly to the tank. One day there were like 4 people in the tower. Including my boss. And we tried to light the heater. Apparently we hadn't screwed the heater in correctly. And mismatched the threads to the tank. So when we lit it. A jet of flame came out of the threads. Immediately I just knew that this propane tank was about to blow up. And it was going to kill us all. And at that moment I knew I had to do something. I screamed throw open the door. And my boss did so. I picked up the tank. Still streaming a jet of fire from the threads. And sprinted down the wooden stairs. I remember distinctly thinking this will blow up in my hands. But I've got to get far enough away from the tower that it won't hurt anyone else. I thought about throwing it. But it was so heavy I couldn't throw it far. And I was sure it'd blow up on impact. My best bet was just to run. Well. I got far enough away and it hadn't exploded. I set it down and started to run away when my boss. Who had gained his senses. Called down from the tower just turn off the gas. Man. Dot. I did so. And then found out that we were. In fact. Never in any danger. Everyone laughed once we had calmed down. But it was crazy. In that moment of sprinting down the stairs I was sure I was going to die. Had accepted it. And was just trying to make sure no one else did either. I was scuba diving with my girlfriend and towards the end of the second dive I could see her struggling with water in her mask. We're 15 or 20 meters deep. I see her throw the out of air signal and bolt for the surface. Grab her and wrestle to slow her down while trying to hand off my spare reg. She doesn't take it and keeps resisting. We surface too fast. I should have let her go or let her pass out and pulled her up if she was out of air. However I couldn't willfully drown her or let her shoot up and get bent. Luckily she wasn't out of air. I calmed her down and we went down to finish the dive. I know that's a big no no but no decompression chambers were close. Anyway we both ended up fine not even mild skin bents. 
walking back to my car with a female friend of mine late at night after being at the bars. Out of the corner of my eye I see two guys come out from behind a building. Pull up bananas and pull guns out of their waistbands. I assume every guy is like me in that they have given a lot of thought as to how they would disarm these guys and kill both of them and what you would say on the news story afterwards. Well what I did do was grab the girl I was with and pull her behind me. They didn't say anything. I just reached into my pockets gave them my wallet and cell phone. He came up and put his gun right up to me. Rather than disarm him like a badass I just pulled the girl in behind me and buried her in my back while staring down the barrel of a gun. After approximately eternity they took off and ran away. Lucky for them. I was about to bust out my secret move. I am not a hero. I'm pretty f-king nerdy but now I know how I would react to getting mugged. And learn something about myself that I like. Plus. I guess she appreciated it cause we dated for a while afterwards and her parents love me. Alabama. Gulf Shores 9 years ago. It was Alabama or Florida. I don't remember it was a long time ago. Big swells of water. You would be chest deep and then find the water go down to your ankles and back. I'm 6 feet 1, didn't get any taller. FCK the gods. Long torso and I have an 81 inch reach. Basically in a foot race I'm slow as FCK to be as athletic as I am but in a pool or a fight I'm at an advantage. This little kid got pulled out and people called for the people on jet skis who rescue people. I just said people a lot. Anyways I decided to go and save the kid. I'm a big badass baller on my uni swim team. What could go wrong? My brother tried to stop me. Last thing I remember was him telling me if I did that I was gonna die. He tells me I said I would die then. I don't remember. Don't even remember touching the water. First thing I remember after my brother tried to stop me was me puking and coughing up copious amounts of water and some broken ribs. They don't tell you that in the movies. Reviving someone will fck them up. Better than the alternative I suppose. I'm here 9 years later so spoiler. I couldn't tell you with any degree of honestly how far I got that kid back to shore or the dock I went off. People have told me I made it back halfway before I went under. I won't say the kid's name or gender. But I didn't save them. I was the only one revived. I'm a little late to the party but here is my story. I was about 14 years old and on a skiing trip with my family. We went up higher than we usually go onto the glacier. Some 3250 meters up. My little sister who 8 years old was still learning some of the basics to skiing but hadn't fully mastered the whole. Not freaking out when you're going to fast thing. She started to speed up and move towards the edge of the slope which had a drop off of about 35 feet and then an extremely steep hill after that. Seeing her in the corner of my eye and without thinking of my safety or anyone around me. I dropped my poles. Sat on the back of my skis and sped up towards her. I knew I had to come in at an angle to move her away from the edge and in doing so basically rugby tackled her to safety. 11 years down the line she still thanks me to this day. It's a nice feeling. I didn't think I was risking my life at the time. But when I was 14 or so my autistic cousin once decided to make a break for it and jump into a very busy bay with a very fast current when no one was looking. He had a life vest. And was laughing. But he was in danger of floating out and being hit by a boat for sure. While my entire family literally ran in circles screaming. I calmly asked for a rope a few times. When no one paid attention. I just jumped in after him. Caught up. And managed to pull him over and ride the current to the next pier. Where a nice guy pulled us both up. I got yelled at. I tend to not react at all during extreme situations and then react why I after the fact. Late to the party but. Grew up in a domestic violence household. One night during one of my dad's worst episodes of crazy. My brother. A teenager at the time. Was feeling pretty anxious. So he started pacing from his room to the living room back and forth. My dad walks into the living room just in tome to see my brother leave his room and immediately thinks that he had called the cops. He gets even angrier. Goes to his room and gets the gun. I look to the kitchen and my mom is knocked out and at this point my brother is sitting next to me on the couch. 
Dad tells us if he even hears a siren. He'll shoot my brother. Well. As luck would have it. There's a siren of a cop car passing next to our house. I saw the way his expression changed and literally threw myself in front of my brother a split second before my dad shot. He missed. Bullet went through the wall. A few minutes of silence and he put the gun away calm down and ate dinner. I was maybe 7 or 8. I did not sleep that night. I didn't have any real thoughts past the word kids. The guy had gotten himself cornered by an animal at work and I grabbed one of the tools we use when we deal with the animals and basically Leroy Jenkins myself between him and the animal. I ended up with a broken arm. A cut and a couple broken ribs. My thoughts. Translated were he has kids and I don't. Double quote. My family and I were vacationing in Orlando. I was about 12 at the time and my little brother was about 6. So naturally we wanted to go swimming in the deep end. My parents were still up in the room getting ready for the day because they slept in. While we went to the pool. At this time of the day. Most of the people were either eating breakfast or leaving to go to Univeral or Disney. So we had the pool to ourselves. I thought it would be a good idea to give my brother a piggyback ride in the water like we were playing chicken. But by ourselves. Well. Since I was only 12 and didn't really think it through. I went into the deep end with him on my back, neither of us could really swim, and immediately regretted my decision. My brother jumped off my back and started to panic and flail around in the water. So I did the same. While we were both freaking out and swallowing tons of water. I tried to do my duty as an older brother and get him to safety. I went underwater and grabbed his legs while pushing myself farther down to try to throw him towards the shallow end. It worked. But I had already swallowed so much water and had so little air that I thought I was going to drown. Right as I thought I was about to die. My brother found someone in the lobby to jump in and pull me out. Thankfully I didn't pass out. But I threw up a ref king lot. TLDR. I saved my brother from drowning because I put him in danger as a 12 year old. Edit. People are asking why my parents let us go to the pool if we couldn't swim. My parents thought I could swim because I took lessons, hell. I even thought I could swim. Too much was going on and I forgot everything about swimming. Obviously panicking is the worst thing I could have done. But hindsight is 20 stroke 20. My dad was abusive to my twin sister and I growing up. When we went hunting with him one morning he just snapped. One minute he was only a little upset. The next moment it was like I was talking to an empty shell. I wasn't talking to my dad anymore. All of a sudden he lifted his 22 rifle to his shoulder and said he was going to blow our F king heads off. It was like the world slowed down. I took a step to my left and stood in front of my sister. It was just me in the barrel of the gun. For a moment I thought that was it. I was going to die. And my sister was going to be alone with this monster. But then he slowly lowered his gun. Laughed at how scared we looked and then continued on his way. We were removed from the house a year later. I'll never forget that moment though. It's been infused in my brain. A few months back I was in my room when I started hearing absolute pain wrenching screams coming from outside. It was about 11pm. I decided to take a look and find a teenage girl in the middle of the street on her back. Clutching her leg. I ran out to see what happened. And apparently she was hauling ass down the hill my street is on and feel off her skateboard. The closest street light is like 50 feet and the hill has a curve that makes things difficult to see. As I'm trying to see how bad she's hurt, later find out she broke her femur and had a pretty nasty concussion, a car comes flying down the road. Without thinking I jump in front of her and start frantically waving to make the car see us. It skidded to a haul about a foot away from us. After a while I just picked her up and moved her from the street. Ran barefoot in nothing but basketball shorts three blocks down to her house and get her parents to her where they immediately took her to the ER. The next day her mother came and thanked me and told me how bad off she was. At the time. I didn't think twice about putting myself in front of a car for a person I've never met before. All I knew was I had to try something to get that car to stop. I was carrying my 3 month old son downstairs. 
And I slipped on the top step and began to fall down the stairs. And yes. Time does slow down. I tried to curl up around him. But my head hit the railing and he flew out of my arms up into the air. And realizing it could mean my death. I threw myself head first down the stairs after him. And caught him. Curled around him. And hit the concrete floor head first. With my baby curled up in my arms. My body wrapped around him. I came to a moment later. And my wife, who saw the whole thing and was shaking and crying, took our son and carefully checked him out. He was okay. Me? Yeah. That was my sixth concussion. Was walking home from my college classes and across the street at the intersection ahead of me was a guy running, turning up street in my direction. I thought nothing of it until I saw someone else coming from behind. He caught up to him and were fighting, and I recognized the chaser was the guy that worked at a local bodega. It must have been robbed. So across the street I went but before I got there. The robber got up and started to pull something out of the back of his pants. I thought. Gun and was able to get to him before he was able to get the weapon out of his pants. Got him in a full Nelson. Face planted him straight into a icy snow pile. Dude had a knife. Bodega guy was able to grab it before we marched him back to the store in a full Nelson. Aided by his braided hair in the back which I held, where the cops were already waiting. The only thought I had when I first made the decision to across the street was. Just a go moment. It doesn't require a conscious decision. You see. You react. If you could read my mind during the whole thing. You'd likely get white noise. Years ago I was walking home from the local club. I was one street away from my place and I saw a guy get jumped from three other men. They fk'd him up. Admittingly I hid behind a bin when I saw it happen. I was a 21 year old woman. But I eventually yelled out and the three men ran away. The guy they bashed was knocked out. Bleeding in the middle of the road. I ran over. Pulled off my shirt singlet and started trying to stem the bleeding with my singlet. Called the cops and the ambulance. Then I heard a 4WD flying down the road. We were in the middle of a corner and I knew that if I didn't get this dude out of the road he would be dead. So I grabbed under his arms and dragged him into the gutter. It was literally a second later this 4WD drove over the top of where we both originally were. All I thought at the time was get him the FCK out of the road. I was completely covered in blood. I ended up being a witness in his court case. Was not me but my spouse. Walking the children to the bus stop was tricky at our old house. You had to ask along a road with a blind hill both ways. He was walking on the wrong side because the stop was only a very short distance and it was hard to get kids to cross the street twice as the stop was one driveway over. Pickup truck came barreling down the hill toward my youngest son and spouse. Spouse said he didn't even think and shoved our son as hard as he could away from the impact. Spouse ended up shattering the truck's windshield with his elbow. My oldest was at the bus stop and watched it all happen. She said my husband pulled himself off the truck to make sure our son was okay. Son was not even shook up. When he got shoved by dad he knew something was wrong so he stayed out of the way and missed seeing the impact. Husband consoles oldest and proceeds to get them on the bus. He said his first real thoughts were that our son got a possible scraped knee from the shove and that reliable storage is going to be mad at me. I was walking the beach with my two cousins. We're all pretty close in age. Probably 12 or so at the time. A giant rottweiler started running at us with its teeth showing and growling hard. I looked and saw both of my cousins nearly crying and decided to at least give them some time to get away. So I quietly told them to run and then got down on one knee mostly cause I was scared he would go for the crotch and then put my hands out hoping he would grab one of them instead of my neck. I guess 12 year old me prioritized crotch then neck then arm. When he got there my arms didn't stop him though. Nothing could have stopped him from getting a good juicy lick on my face. He was cuddled into me and begging for belly rubs before I could even open my eyes. Shocked. I started petting him and my cousins walked back over and we all petted him and played with him for a while. I think he lived in one of the houses along the beach and had gotten out cause nobody ever came for him and he jumped over a fence and was running up to a house when we left. Saw my arsehole cat walking along the fence I was fixing while my dog was asleep in the sun. 
She knocks over the fence boards, which are filled with nails, so I drop everything and dive to shove my dog out of the way so he doesn't turn into the first member of the full of holes and rusty nails club. Squeeze my eyes shut. Open them a minute later to discover the boards had fallen against the wall of the house. So they never would have hit the dog and didn't really fall very far at all. Dad was pissed that I'd sacrifice myself for a dog. I know I did the right thing. Two years ago I was late to class, sophomore in college at the time, and I was walking really fast to class. There is a girl texting on her cell phone right behind me. I go to cross the street at one point and she follows without looking up from her phone. Still head down texting just kinda following whatever I do. Well there is a divider. One of those grass patches between lanes. And I stop there because a car is coming. Well she keeps walking because she is still looking at her phone and not paying attention. So I run out and grab her. Pick her up off the ground and place her by the grass patch while I'm standing in the street. I'm expecting to get hit because I basically switched places with her and put her in the safe place while sacrificing myself. Car ends up swerving partially onto the sidewalk and missed me. Girl is freaking out and asking if I'm okay and blah blah blah. I make sure she's okay and tell her to not text and cross the street. Went to class and actually had a good excuse for being late so I didn't get counted off. I will clarify this now because everyone I tell this story to asks. No I did not get her number. I didn't even ask. Many years ago, don't remember for sure how many. Maybe 15? Comma I was hanging out with my mom in the kitchen at my parents house. Out of nowhere this terrifying noise happened. I can only liken it to what I imagine the fuselage of a 747 would sound like if it were to crash through the roof. And since they lived a half mile away from a busy airport it was the very first thing I thought of. My immediate reaction was to dive on top of her and cover her with my body. My body had already started moving and my arms were outstretched. Ready to grab her and shove her down when somehow I realized that nothing was actually crashing through the roof of the house. I don't know how I stopped before I got to her. But I'm glad I did because their counters are actually heavy. Rough edge floor tiles and she was smaller than me. Had I hit her I probably would have broken her. I remember her looking at me standing there in this f up frozen pose with my arms out and asking me what the hell I was doing. We both laughed our asses off in that way you do when something scary happens. But I was 100% willing to cover her body with mine to take the impact. We never did find out what made that infernal noise. She died from cancer about 10 weeks ago. I would have taken that impact for her. 2. If I could. After a party me and a friend were really high on lean blunts and hooking up in some bushes by the river near my campus. Out of nowhere we heard about 6 or 7 pops coming from up the hill behind us. And I heard bullets whizzing through the tree branches above us. We got up and started running. He was in front of me. We quickly reached the path we were near. And he tried to turn and run in the direction that would have led him right to where the shooter was. I literally grabbed him by the back of the shirt. And said no. He'll expect us to go that way. And led him the opposite direction through some paths I sometimes took to school. It was a small act. But if he had ran that way. He really would have ran right into the shooter. I guess I wasn't intending to sacrifice my life. But I did take extra time and precaution to make sure that he was going to survive. While literally being shot at. We ran through through the woods and took a quick turn and ran up the hill onto the road. The shooter had reached the road too. And he shot at us and some other people who were also on the road. We ran and hid in a 7-11 and called the cops. No one got shot and the shooter got away. When I was in high school I was at home alone with my little brother and sister when all of a sudden the front door flew open. A big man stumbled in that we did not know. He started yelling Jim. Jim. I tried to stay calm and kept repeating so you need to leave and instructed my siblings to leave out the back door. My brother left but my little sister was frozen still in fear. The stranger became pissed because my dog was barking loudly at him and he threw the bag he was carrying at me. He then stumbled towards me and my sister and started to make a move that appeared to be a lunge at my sister. I immediately yelled and stepped between them and grabbed my little sister and ran out the back door. 
My siblings and I stood at the edge of our backyard as I proceeded to call the police when all of a sudden the man came around the corner of the house and upon seeing us started running at us. At the time I was still holding my sister and my brother and I started running through the woods. We ran till we came upon a street and were picked up by our parents, who were at a friend's house, and met the cops. My feet and my brother's feet were bleeding from the run. It turns out that the man was very drunk and high but at the moment I thought we were in danger and we probably were. At the time the only thing I could think is that my sister needed help and I was going to help her. I didn't realize how scared I was until I got picked up by my parents and I burst into tears. I was running on pure adrenaline and fear for my sister without realizing how scared I was.